the Titanic is easily the most famous ship of the White Star Line. There were plenty of others though, including the SS Afrique. Built in 1898 in the same Harland and Wolff shipyards where the Titanic would be built later in later years, it enjoyed a long and fruitful life, transporting goods and passengers between the UK and Australia, before being sunk in 1917 by a German submarine. The wreck lies in just under 80 metres off the southwest coast of the UK, and this is the target for our dive today. Conditions are fabulous, both above the water and underneath. Looks like it's going to be another great dive. People who've watched some of my other videos will know that I often use a scooter, but I've not got one with me today, as I'm planning on going inside the wreck. What that does mean though is that the descent is going to take me a bit longer than usual. This does give me the opportunity though to talk about a few of the issues surrounding the plate that you're going to see me finding on the wreck and then bringing up to the surface. Now this is quite an emotive subject and people have strong views either way. I'll start off by saying that everything you see me doing in this video is completely legal under UK law. The wreck is owned by a private individual who bought it probably sometime in the 60s or 70s. I've reported my find through the receiver of wreck and the receiver of wreck has been in touch with the person who owns the SS Afrique. Following this, the plate has been given to me in lieu of the salvage to which I would otherwise be entitled to claim. What this means is the plate is mine in exactly the same way as it would be if I'd bought it from a shop. Now people have strong opinions on this and some people don't believe it. it's right to take things off wrecks, especially ones on which people have died, such as the Afrique. Not surprisingly, that isn't a view with which I agree. There's lots of reasons for my uh, disagreement, not least the fact that as you will see, the plate is not likely to be accessible for much longer. When the wreck collapses, it will get crushed and destroyed and therefore probably won't be there for future generations. Anyway, I look forward to uh, reading your views on this uh, in the comments section of my video. In the meantime, you can see, as we descend, the water's getting darker. That's simply because there's less light able to penetrate down to this depth. Viz remains pretty good though, uh, which is really nice and it often can be absolutely stunning out in this part of um, the English Channel. Those who've watched some of my other videos know that I don't tend to cut them so you do get the full experience of the dive. If you haven't seen any of my other videos then obviously I'd really encourage you to have a look at them and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them in the same way that this one. Hopefully it's obvious that my video camera is mounted on my head. That means you're seeing what I'm looking at. So now I'm just having a quick look behind me to make sure my buddy's okay. He's waving his torch in a circle, which is the signal that we use to indicate that everything's okay. We're getting deep now, so we must be getting really close to the wreck. I'm expecting it to come into view any moment. Oh yeah, there it is, brilliant. 
and you can see actually it looks as though we're off the side of the wreck there's a big bit of plate underneath me as the first divers down our job is to use a waster line to secure the shot to the wreck that means it won't get dragged off either by the tide or by other divers before I do that though I need to get my strobes on strobes are really useful because they find help us find the shot line which on a wreck the size of the Afrique is not always as easy to do as you might think so these are a really really useful and important thing and you can see it's been sat, set to flash there my buddy will be doing the same thing above me if you look over the edge of the wreck there you can see the grapple and it's just held on with a couple of the tines what I need to do is go down and make sure it's in a bit better There's a load of net down here. In fact, the whole wreck of the Afrique is covered in net. To start with, I'm going to take the grapple down and I'm going to see if there's something down there I can hook it on. As you'll see, it's just net. And every time I try and put it in the net, it's, it's no good. The net moves. And clearly that's not a, uh, not a helpful thing for us. You see I'm looking around something else to hook it onto maybe another piece of wreckage that's fallen off the side of the wreck but there isn't anything just this manky old net so in a minute what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up and I'm going to hook it onto a bit of some sort of rib or something that's sticking out of the side of the wreck and actually it will hold on there much better so here I go now I'm lifting it up trying not to bash through all the pink sea fans that are on the side of the hull and there you go that's nice and secure there my buddy's got the waster which is the blue line and he's going to secure it on there meanwhile you'll see I've got a yellow buoy in my right hand we call that the pill or the pellet once the uh, shot line is secured on I'm going to let go of that and it will go up to the surface and let the other divers know that they can start their descent there you go you can see it's blocking the camera at the moment I'm just waiting for the other diver to finish tying off there and then you'll see me release it Yep, yeah, I think he's done. So, time to get rid of the pill. And it's gone. What that means is it's also time for us to go and start our dive, really. I know I'm on the side of the wreck. It's really obvious from the amount of plate. And the Afrique, the way it's collapsed, is it's largely fallen inwards. All the decks and all the sides of the hull have basically folded inwards. And the inside is almost like a big bathtub. So we're just heading up there now. As you can see, there's loads of old net all over the wreck. This is just one bit of it here. But you can see it's actually become colonized. So removing it would actually take off an awful lot of marine life. All the pink sea fans and the various other bits and pieces that there are around there. I'm afraid I'm not particularly good at identifying underwater animals of any sort. Now we're in, we've gone over the top of the side and we're looking in. And you can see what I mean about how it's all folded in. And we're in the bow area here. That's pretty obvious. The stern was largely the passenger accommodation. The bow and front of the bridge was where they had all the cargo. You can see it's collapsed in and in a moment we're going to see a whole load of pipes. There they are and various other bits and pieces. Once again, just a whole load of net all over it. There's a particular part of the wreck that I'm heading for because I've heard that's where there are plates to be found. As I head there, Obviously, I'm having a good look around. 
The Afrique is well known for having all sorts of interesting bits and pieces on it. As you can see, the visibility is actually really nice. It's dark, but there's not too much in the water to stop us from seeing quite a distance. This is actually looking off the side of the wreck. This bit of the hull hasn't collapsed inwards, it's collapsed outwards. And as you'll see, I'm about to swim along the side of the hull for a bit. I always like to do this. You sometimes find interesting things off the side of wrecks as well as inside them. This bit of the dive shows the hull folded inwards really well. You can see the seabed is down to the right and you can, all, you can actually see the crease in the hull just to the left of my torch there. And the actual big bit of plate to the left is folded in towards the centre of the wreck. You'll hear a beeping noise and that's me looking at the handset on my AP Inspiration. As you probably saw there's a red line that said cell warning. That's not great. It means one of the three oxygen cells is misaligned with the other two. That could be an indication that one cell is bad or that two cells are bad. Fortunately when I looked at it you'll see there's not much difference between them. As you'd expect I continue to keep an eye on it through the dive. And you may hear and see a couple of other warnings uh, over the next 20 minutes or so. But I'm all over it. It's all good. As you can see, I think we're getting close to the what was the bridge area here. And there's a few interesting bits and pieces. I've no idea what that brass thing is. I'm going to pull it out and have a look at it and then put it back again. You'll also see me having a look at a few other bits and pieces. Once again, difficult to say what they actually are. That thing there may be a lampshade. I've no idea. The Afrique was a really big ship. It had capacity for 320 passengers. When it was sunk, there was about 170 people on board, of whom very sadly, 22 lost their lives. This thing's really interesting. It's a deck prism, so it would have been mounted the opposite way up to which you can see it here. What it does is allow daylight to go between the decks, i.e. from a deck that has a clear view of the sky down to one where there is no natural light. The thing my torch is shining on there is actually part of the deck. It's folded in, which is why it's at that kind of 45 degree angle. This is the first bit of crockery. It's actually a second class white star line plate or a small fragment of one anyway. 
and identical plates would have been carried on board, or in fact were carried on board the Titanic. This is what I'm looking for. I know that under the wreck here are places where bits of plates have been spotted before. I'm hoping that if I go in and look around, I may be able to find an intact one. In order to get there though, I'm going to have to swim inside the wreck under parts of the hull that have folded over. I'm just letting my, no my buddy know that's what I'm going to do. Also going to leave in my camera. It's one less thing for me to get snagged on. <laughs> Having left my camera safely with my buddy, I'm now going to start to go inside. Doesn't take long before I bump my head for the first time. As I go inside, you can start to see there's all sorts of bits and pieces on the floor. Loads of broken plates. That's good news, as it means I'm in the right area. It's quite tight in here and obviously really silty. One of the things I'm keen to do is minimise the amount of silt that I kick up so that the visibility doesn't reduce. As you can see there, as soon as I pick that plate up, the visibility vanishes. But the great news is I'm in luck almost instantly. There's a plate which is absolutely fantastic. There must be more. So I'm going to go on a treasure hunt, going further in, see if I can find some other ones. Just picking that one up there, you can see how much silt it's generated. So I need to be really careful. And this also shows how tight it is where I am. That plate though is a corker. Look at it, you can see the white star line on it. It's been underwater over 100 years and survived this entire time. Torpedoing, ships sinking, a hundred years of storms, it's incredible.
Unfortunately, finding another one is proving a bit more tricky. There's loads and loads of broken ones and other things, such as this little cup that I picked up there. Once again, uh, broken, unfortunately. While I'm disturbing all the silt, you see a little conger eel there. No doubt wondering what on earth is happening in his house. I think I found another one here. Unfortunately, it seems to be stuck somehow. Sometimes this happens where when things rust and decay, they actually catch things in them. And as you'll see, I have a good go at getting this other one out. It just won't move. I'm hoping by sticking my knife underneath it, I can cause it to break free somehow. Unfortunately, I just can't get it under. It's, it's down so um, well. It's really frustrating. And obviously what I don't want to do is I don't want to break it. Obviously this is really kicking up the viz. You can see how poor it is with all that silt. Fortunately, I'm really close to the exit and I know my way out, so I'm not that worried by it. That's another great view of the plate though, isn't it? Doesn't it look great? There's so many broken ones down here though. It's really sad and a little bit frustrating. Not having much joy in that area, I decide to try and swim in a bit further and see if there's anything up here. Unfortunately, as you can see, it becomes really clear that there's no more crockery up in this area of the wreck, so it all must be back where I was during the first bit of this section of the dive.
It's also getting really tight here. And I, as you can see, I bang my head again. That's the moment at which I decide that enough is probably enough. And I'm going to turn around and head back towards the entrance. probably hear the alarm on my rebreather going off again. I've had another look at the cells. They're only marginally apart, so I cancel the alarm with my thumb. I'm back near the entrance. This is the plate, well, probably a bowl that wouldn't shift. I guess I'm miraculously hoping that might have improved since I've been away. Not really surprisingly, it hasn't. The other diver has very patiently been waiting for me, exploring the area around the entrance and keeping an eye out for my return. We're now at that point of the dive though where we need to start heading back to the shot. It's a reasonable swim for here, so that's where we're going to head.
We're actually swimming relatively quickly at this point. Keen to get back. We know we've got a lot of decompression ahead of us. Having said that, there's always time to uh, have a quick look if you spot anything interesting on the way back. This is the side of the ship again. You can see the inside is on the left and the outside is on the right where the hull has folded over. There's also a huge amount of ancient netting and the Afrique is absolutely covered in it. Up in front of us, fair distance off, you just make out the light of another diver. As he gets closer, you can hear the scooter and I'll actually see him go past. Also get the first glimpse of the strobes. It's always nice when you're looking for them and you see them. It knows that you, you know that your way back is confirmed. Quick glance at my uh, dive computer shows I'm currently sitting at just under two hours of deco to do. By the time I've got to the shot, taken my strobes off, it'll be well over two hours. Back on the shot line, you see my strobe, it's the one with green tape on. Normally I actually have a double strobe, but I didn't have it for this dive. The double is just in case one of them fails, it's just another bit of redundancy. I also want my uh, camera back. It's quite an expensive bit of kit. If I drop it here, it's fine. I can go down and get it. If I drop it while I'm on my deco stops, it's never coming back. I'm sure it goes without saying that I'm extremely pleased with the result of this dive. These plates are identical to ones that were carried on the Titanic and it's great to have that link with something that I own and not only that, that I've recovered myself. Well that's it, dive's complete other than the several hours of decompression that needs to be done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a comment, or like it, or subscribe, tell your friends. All that stuff would be great. Thank you, and goodbye.